From Britain and more than 20 countries in Europe come new settlers. Like more than a million others before them, they step ashore. The old life behind them, the new ahead. Over the sea they come to Australia, to shores which fringe a land of contrast. A continent of three million square miles, rich in natural wealth and beauty. They come to a modern nation, a nation with a high standard of living, with ten major ports to handle her overseas trade. Airlines to span her vast distances, and thousands of miles of railways. Australia needs more population. Natural increase is not enough. He may harvest the crops of the future, but not now. Children of today will run the factories, offices or schools, but not yet. To get more people quickly, Australians through their government began in 1945 a program of planned, balanced immigration. They helped to pay the fares of the migrants. They set out to attract workers with the skills the nation needed. Today, Australia is reaping the rewards of this careful planning. Sven is from Sweden. He works on Victoria's gas-making project. Joe, on the left, is from Malta. These men are from Britain. On some assembly lines, well over half of the workers are migrants. Their production has saved Australia a hundred million pounds a year in imports. Steel production is an index of a nation's industrial growth. And the great post-war development of Australia's steel industry could not have occurred without the labour and skill of migrants. Men like Kurt from Germany, one of the seven out of ten additional steel workers who have come to Australia since the war. Without increased steel supplies, effective industrial expansion would be impossible. Steel for cars, trucks, refrigerators, railway lines. Steel for the framework of new buildings, built with the help of skilled migrants. The strong arms and sweat of thousands of new settlers have helped the rich and important rural industries to grow. On Australia's vast Snowy Mountains hydroelectric scheme, 50% of the workers building dams and power stations are migrants. They come from Britain, Germany, Holland, Italy and Scandinavia. Mario is from Italy. Now he's helping to build his new country. All over the country, migrants are working. Working in full partnership with Australians working with Australians to speed communications, to extend and improve transport, working at the great task of building a nation. of the new settlers on Australia's way of life can be seen everywhere.
continental-style cafes have sprung up to cater for the tastes of new settlers from Europe. Tastes which many Australians are enjoying. And it's easy to see why. Many migrants live in suburban homes in pleasant surroundings. And from their homes have spread new ideas on cooking. The music and culture of many nationalities adds new breadth to Australian life. life. Not only has Australia gained many talented musicians, but many keen sportsmen too. Soccer players, giving new impetus to an international game. New Australian girls, too, enjoy sport. English, German and Australian girls are playing here. Many migrants, like the Dutch Otto family, have started their own businesses, bringing arts and crafts from the old world. Ancient skills flourish again on Australian soil. Skills handed from father to son. This migrant child may be a future artist. Children playing happily at a migrant centre kindergarten and Australian and New Australian studying together. They are Australia's investment for the future. Marina von Heim, Australia has an area of three million square miles which is more than 20 times the area of Germany. That's correct, Marina. Quick to learn English and to accept their new country, migrant children distinguish themselves at universities, growing up to be future citizens. Meanwhile, migrants from Britain and Europe continue to arrive. They keep on coming because Australia's migration goal has not yet been attained. There is need for many more because planned immigration is Australia's passport to progress. <laughs> <laughs>